So hello and welcome to tonight's video. We are up late gaming on the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 and I want to show you how to do nighttime CRT shaders. So as you can see here I'm playing Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers on the GBA with a CRT TV shader with nighttime colors that are easy on the eyes. Um, you should also adjust brightness my brightness is pretty low as well um, but if you play with the default shaders or with no shader it's going to be a pretty jarring experience for your eyes late at night and so as, as you can see here the the brightness you can turn it way up I know it doesn't really translate into the screen record so you can't really see that but I'd recommend turning it down low if you don't know about that to begin with but we're going to be going into detail step by step of how to get it to look like this. Um, so this will work for any Game Boy Advance game. And learning how to load your own shaders and layer your own shaders through this video, you should be able to apply this to other games as well. So I'm hitting the RetroArch quick menu here, and I'm turning off the shader to show you this is what it looks like stock. So as you can see, it's much more bright, it's much more saturated, there's a lot more blues and, and just like all the colors are really kind of just pop. It's nice in the daytime. It's nice if you're in a sunny, maybe outdoors or in a bright room. But at night, it's kind of jarring. So if I turn the video shader on, this custom shader that I'm going to show you how to build, we go back to the nighttime setting. So if this is something that interests you and you want to learn how to get this setting on your Retroid Pocket Flip 2 or Retroid Pocket 5. Carefully follow along to all the steps in this video and I will guide you step by step how to create this setup. So first you're going to want to go to the quick menu. So if you don't know how to go to the quick menu, there's sort of like this RetroArch menu button that you click on on the touch screen within a RetroArch game once you're in the game and you can click on the home, the gear icon, or the, it's like a little house or a gear or the three lines. And first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is adjust your aspect ratio if you haven't yet. So 16 by nine is what I have it on. That's using the uh, gear icon and then go to video and then scaling and then aspect ratio. Next, we're gonna be going to the quick menu so that's using the home icon and then quick menu and then scrolling all the way down to shaders and then here's that little video shaders um, switch that I was toggling before so that's how I got there that's at the very top of the shaders list <coughs> and uh, as you go down the list you'll see load, prepend, append, save, blah 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 and then down at the bottom you see my stack of shaders so look through these, there's four shaders I have stacked on each other to create the nighttime effect. So just make sure you're looking at these and making sure you understand all four. So the first one is LCD Grid V2. And then here is my shader parameters. So these are basically all the, the minute settings of those four shaders to get them to look this way. So I'm slowly scrolling through here and you can repeat this if you need to. And I'll revisit this later on in the video as well. But make sure that your settings are one to one, same exact as you can see here, if you wanna get the same effect that I have on my screen. Um, shader passes are basically just the layers. So the amount of shaders that you have layered so mine says four because I have four layers. Um, to start, you need to press load. So that's how you're gonna get your first shader. As you can see, if you press load, you can see these shaders that you already have saved. Like mine is the GBA nighttime, which is this one. This is the one we're looking at. But if I press load and if I pick a shader, that's gonna start me all over again and it's gonna delete all the shaders I have here. So once you press load, you're going to do this. You're going to press on shaders underscore GLSL. And then you're going to scroll down to handheld. And then you're going to scroll down to the LCD grid V2 shader right there. And just click on it. 
So now you've loaded one shader. See how that's my only shader now? Shader zero. And now, don't press load, you're going to press append to get the second layer. So you press append, press GLSL again, and then go down to handheld once more. And this time we're going to click on the GBC game bat color. Just click on it, and then it'll add as a second layer the GBC game bat color, as you can see here. And then we're going to press append again. Don't press load. It'll load will restart. GLSL again, but this time we're going to go into the CRT folder because this will be our CRT shader. And just scroll down until it says CRT Geom. Select that one. And now I'm going to show you what happens if you press load. On the fourth shader, will mess up on purpose. So if I go here and press load, and then I select the correct one, which is GLSL, and then handheld, and then palm color. Watch what happens. This is what you don't want to do. Now look, my first shader is palm color. So now all my stack has been deleted. I don't have those three shaders and then palm color is my fourth one. It's just palm color, that's my first one. So don't make that same mistake, right? You want to press append, not load. Load is only for the very first shader. So here we press load, and then we're going to select our first shader again. I'm going to go a little faster this time, but it's GLSL, and then handheld, and then LCD V2, LCD grid V2, right there. And then you're going to press append, shaders GLSL, handheld, and then GBC game bat color, and then press append. Shaders GLSL, CRT, and then CRT Geom, and then press append, shaders GLSL, and then go to handheld, and then go to palm color. So that's your fourth shader in the stack. Now you should have all four here. So if we test this out, what it will look like before you touch the parameters, it will be not exactly what nighttime would be like, but it's pretty close, and this is already better than stock if you're going to play at nighttime. So if you don't want to mess with the parameters, you don't want to make it orange looking or like a warm color palette like I had it, uh, then just leave it like this That's if that's what you want. It's kind of less saturated, um, less jarring already. And the cool CRT bubble effect, bubble screen is there. But we're going to go in and change all the parameters, or not all the parameters, but some of them. So just copy what I have here. Um, the first parameter is at the very top. It's called color of R, subpixel R. What this does is it changes the amount of red, basically. We're going to increase it from 0.75 all the way to 1. And we're going to do this with some of the colors. Um, same thing on color of G, subpixel G. It's at 0 0.75 here, but we're going to change it to 1. And then... Uh, color of B, subpixel B, that's the amount of blue. So we're going to change this. It's at 0 0.75 by default. We're going to actually decrease it to 0 0.4. So what that does is it decreases the amount of blue. And this gives you that warm, uh, orangey looking screen that's less jarring at nighttime because blue light actually stresses out your eyes. Um, and you should only see it during the day, actually. So we're gonna just gonna decrease blue light. So gain is gonna be at 1.5 by default, and we're gonna turn that down to one. That's gonna decrease the brightness a little bit, darken everything, just a little bit. Next parameter is gonna be LCD input gamma, which is gonna be 2.2 by default. We're gonna turn it up to three. And then black level is gonna be zero by default. We're gonna turn that up to zero or 0 0.05 and then uh, let's see here I think all the CRT settings are default yeah all default but just make sure they look the same here you can play with these things if you want if you want the you know corner size or the curvature radius or whatever of the bubble screen to be different bigger smaller whatever um, you can adjust these parameters here 
and that will change the way the CRT shows up. Um, I think there's overscan percent, which is pretty cool. Mine are at 100. And the sharpness I have at 1. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's default, but basically if you like a sharp image, you can turn that up. If you like a sort of a softer image, you can turn that down. Luminance and saturation again. All just default. This is what it should look like. So let's test this out just to show you. Yeah. So this is where it's way more reddish orangish, just a warm color palette, and it's got the CRT and the grid, LCD grid um, effects. There are different CRT effects. I like the CRT Geom. You can experiment with other CRT uh, shaders, um, but that's basically my favorite for playing at nighttime. So now, if you go into save, you can do a few things here. See how it says save shader preset as? You're gonna wanna click that, but first, if you want this as your default, you can do save global preset, save core preset, save content directory preset, and save game preset. If you click all these things, it'll basically just make it so that um, every time you turn on retro arc, it'll have this shader. Like every time you load up this game, it'll have this shader. It'll just be automatic. Um, so now if you press save shader preset as, you can enter a name. Like I'll call this one YouTube. Uh, just so I know the difference. GBA Nighttime. Because I think my other one's called GBA Nighttime. So now it'll be one of my shaders when you press load. It'll be one of those options there. And so if you don't want it automatic, if you want it something that you can turn on, you can always go into shaders in the quick menu and press load and then you can click on GBA Nighttime, the one that you just created, and it'll have that four shader stack and it'll just automatically blip into that. So it's sort of like a toggleable option. But I just set it to default, so now if we quit out of RetroArch and then load back in, and I'm just going to load up the uh, same game, you'll see from the very start, at the very beginning, it's booting with a CRT TV bubble screen, which is super awesome, like retro vibe. And it's also the warm palette, so less blue light, better on the eyes, easier on the eyes. It's kind of like a flux filter. Uh, it's just very nice to play at nighttime. It's quite late right now where I'm at, and I still want a game, but I don't want to burn my eyes. So here we go. Look at that. I load right in, it's just automatic, just turns right on. So if you have a game that you want to play only at nighttime, like this game, for example, I only play at like 2 a.m. or something or whatever, <laughs> then I'll just keep it as my default. And this shader I will save to the globals um, or the g game preset or whatever. So as you can see there, GBA nighttime, nighttime, and then U YouTube GBA. Nighttime. That's the one we just made at the very bottom. So let's test it out. If I go to nighttime GBA, is it the same? Oh, this is, uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Let me load up my one, it's called GBA Nighttime. Yeah. So let's see if it looks the same. Yeah. So it's the same one I just taught you guys how to do. Um, if I go to YouTube, GBA Nighttime, yeah, it's the same. So there you go, accurate uh, one to one settings right there. So yeah, now you know how to create your own. Uh, nighttime CRT shaders for at least it works on Game Boy Advance it probably works on other things too other emulators probably have this feature I'm not sure but this is MGBA uh, emulator core running on RetroArch I'm sure there's other um, emulators that you can do this with but this is the game I'm playing right now on RetroArch so I'm not really playing any others at the moment but I can test it out on other emulators maybe SNES has this too or something I'm not really sure um, and PlayStation and stuff like that. But yeah, as you can see, like it works really well. It doesn't inhibit your ability to play the game at all. The game still looks great. Um, still plays great. And the colors are still there. Like You can still tell that that guy's a different color. You can still see your, my health is extremely low, and it's a different color than the magic. It's just very subtle. The color differences are a little more subtle. But it's just cool, like in the menus, like you can see the shape of the CRT screen is just clearly bending 
the uh, corners. And the whole frame is like rounded, which is just a really cool effect. And it looks really good on the Retroid Pocket Flip too. Like when you open up the screen, it's a quite a bright screen. It's an OLED display. So playing this game with a CRT filter and warm colors is a very pleasant experience for the eyes, even in the daytime. Or if you just play in a dimly lit room, it's just not as jarring and it's not as oversaturated. Because this can be quite an oversaturated experience. Emulation in general for older game systems tends to be kind of bright and colorful and oversaturated. And these old games, even though this is Game Boy Advance, there was never a CRT Game Boy Advance. It's cool that it kind of is like a SNES and kind of has SNES-like graphics and kind of has like this CRT throwback vibe where it's like, this looks like I'm playing a SNES Lord of the Rings game, which I don't think is even a thing. But uh, yeah, now it is, right? Like now it's possible to have this like double down retro experience because we're playing a retro game with retro TV. It's like, I didn't have to buy a $700 CRT TV, I can just basically emulate CRT TV effects on a handheld emulator. So I thought this was really neat, and I figured maybe other people would want to do the same thing. So why not make a tutorial? So I hope you guys enjoyed this whole video, and uh, catch you next time. Bye.